Hi, my name is Alessandro Gangelosi and that's a video tutorial coming from cgcookie.com for MaxCookie. Today we'll work at a, a, a series of tutorial to create a cloaking effects. Uh, we'll try to make appearing this sphere in this environment. Uh, we'll use uh, some procedural maps in the material editor and we'll use the particle flow system to create some layers to create some additional effects and some mask to make it appear. So uh, let's start preparing the scene and to know if the scene is right, let's go in Customize, Unit Setup. We work at centimeters and we'll start preparing the, the scene. It'll be uh, really, uh, really simple. So let's create a sphere and the sphere will be 40 centimeters. This one will be our objects with uh, the cloaking and to do something uh, uh, interesting maybe we can create just a little bit of terrain all around so uh, let's move it there and we'll try to do uh, this one bigger so let's say c meters uh, six meters by six meters let's remove the grid using the g key and then Let's see what we have there. Maybe we can do it bigger. So let's say eight meters by eight meters. And again, let's check this one. Okay. Uh, let's add a little bit of detail. And we can use, for example, uh, the sculpting there so let's go for free form and let's open this one can be converted to editable poly and now we can access to the uh, paint the form so uh, let's use for example the let's move it there and let's say maybe 60 okay and you see that we are able to sculpt and again let's go there and let's start sculpting uh, a little bit all around the sphere and again okay and let's do it also on the other side and again a little bit uh, there okay so the sphere is inside this piece of rock and then we can sculpt a little bit all the other piece there but we use uh, a bigger we can use also an higher strength uh, let's say 150 so you see I'm just sculpting a little bit in this way just a little bit of chaos let's remove and let's go in shade it So that's our actual terrain and we can go there, use the turbo smooth. You see, so in this case we have more detail and back collapse to say yes and then back with a free form, uh, sorry, convert to editable poly. You see, and just sculpting a little bit on, on this area. Okay. Then we can close the ribbon. And 
end game. Now we can go inside the material editor. We can create a displays map there. So uh, let's say maybe we'll use a smoke map and there we assign a displays and we can use an higher level for the strength and we copy the map there as an instance luminance at the center so we can set or we can go in this way and you see that it's more similar to a terrain okay it is not bad uh, let's try to have a second map so this one can be a composite I'm sorry not a combustion undo okay I'm back there a composite keep hold map and the second map can be a noise this noise is a turbulence with a swoop so you see that's let's say six and it's bigger okay and let's say that this one is a multiply over the other let's see this map and we'll work to have more visibility just for some area so you see that's how the map will look okay and uh, we can add another map let's say again a noise with the turbulence and let's say that before we use a turbulence move to have more detail and then this one can be little let's say 15 let's say with seven for the levels and this one is an average and it is really low let's see with another iteration okay and let's say that it is lower 10 with no maps okay you see in this case we have more detail over the ground so uh, let's close and that's our terrain you see that it is not bad uh, then we can go to save the scene and we go in the same folder as always and let's call it 3ds max particles cloaking with pflow we can copy everything ctrl c and then save okay so we have the basic environment there and this one can be called terrain and this one is the uh, Robo sphere. So um, now I'd like to find a camera position, and we can, for example, go inside the view, uh, let's say show save frame, and let's set our resolution. So we can go for something like that but obviously uh, let's say that we can create a camera create camera from view and let's change 
a little bit the various parameters. And maybe we can do the sphere bigger so we can see in a better way the effects. Maybe, okay, something like that. So um, that's our environment, that's the sphere. Uh, let's start uh, to do a little bit of lighting. Uh, obviously, I like to have uh, a little bit of darkness all around. So we do something using uh, uh, not so much lighting. So let's use, we can do it using a, a free spot. Let's say that this one is the light and let's say that we have obviously the shadows and we'll use uh, Minter Ray for the rendering because uh, I'd like to focus on the particles. So uh, let's say that the lighting is a little bit higher and it is uh, sunlight coming from outside so we can use a little bit of coloring and we are working with a, an inverse square illumination so we have to use higher level of lighting let's see to the K let's say that start from there and then we can adjust back the power okay so uh, then uh, we have to focus on the spotlight let's say that the main lighting coming from there and we have a, a little bit of lighting coming out until there so we don't see anything else outside uh, let's see if we have to fix something more but I think we have everything so let's save again and let's set Mentor Ray as rendering engine let's use uh, the global illumination from final gather let's lock the resolution and let's go at lower just to see a preview obviously that's uh, the scene and it's really really simple so um, let's do something else i like to focus on the lighting so maybe we can use the mental ray spot to have a more precise lighting and this one let's say that we use the area parameters and we have a disk And in this case, something like that. So we have soft shadows inside the rendering. And let's start to prepare some material. Let's say metal sphere. And the metal sphere, uh, let's use more segments. And let's go for an arc in the sign. And let's start having just a metal sphere with no more stuff. Let's say that the reflection is zero, uh, zero 07 and it is white for the moment. We use the freshener IRR. We have the anisotropy. And the IRR is 5. okay and let's say that we have a little bit of glossiness then the terrain let's go to have 
an arc and a sine. We can have a bitmap and maybe we can use directly a substance map. Load substance textures. And let's see the ground, maybe this one, the first one. Yes, something like that can be enough. And let's say that the map needs just an higher resolution. Let's say two key. And we'll use more detail, let's say zero one for the blaring. Maybe we can go for having just a tiling of 2 and 2 and we'll have a really low reflectivity and it is controlled by the map and in this case we'll use the specular and it is really high glossy okay then I like to use the error and we can go for one six. Then I like to have the same map. So let's go there. Our right mouse button. And let's go to have uh, first of all the bumping. And let's go to use the bump but we change there the blurring to 0 5 and for the moment we put also the displacement map but we'll see later if it is needed and save let's go to share to be faster and we can render a preview so uh, that's the render, we have to tune a little bit uh, the terrain there, so uh, let's go in the map, I like to have something darker, so let's go in the substance, you see it is grey, uh, we can have a little bit of playing, or maybe we can use directly the other map let's see if we can achieve the result I like and let's try to have another bump let's go to three or maybe one zero And let's see just an area so let's say for example this part and right that's the result uh, let's try to use a color correction to control the coloring for this map keep all map and let's play with a use shifting Again, it is too red actually, so we can remove a little bit of saturation. And play again with the shifting there, a little bit less red okay um, let's try to have a darker map And then let's see what happens if we have 
the displacement so save and set the displace active and let's check the parameters for the displacement let's say the edge length is 1 and the max subdivision is 64 or maybe let's try with 16 So you see that we start to uh, to see the displacement. Maybe we can try to have a little bit more. So again, inside the material editor, let's try to have two, and we can render again. Okay, let's stay with the setup. <clears throat> Sorry, and let's try to have another light inside the scene. Uh, let's close, and let's go for an area omni. but let's stay at the, on the other side let's say there and uh, we'll try to have a blue color and this one can be set to off just to play a little bit with the other lighting and let's get there let's set to off there the displacement and let's render a preview Okay, you see that's the mapping actually. Uh, let's render this side. Okay, and let's go there and let's say that this one is a little bit less powerful. So let's say that the intensity is lower let's set this one to off and we say also that we have the inverse square and we have also the uh, far attonation and let's see again with this lighting how it looks so you see we have less power lighting there over the ground and if we go back to the other lights and set to on okay you see uh, it seems that we have a nice lighting inside the scene okay nice save and I like to work a little bit over uh, the material there for the sphere and also to add a little bit of volume lighting maybe uh, but we can do it later so uh, first of all let's go to work at this sphere and we are using no uh, maps actually there but I like to use something so let's start to play with some bitmap and we can use some map coming from 3ds max so let's go in the metal and let's see what we can use we have not so much mapping there as you can see but maybe Maybe we can use something like that. Or let's see in the arc maps. If we have something that can be used. Let's try to use this map just to see if it can work and maybe well, we have to use something to create it as more complex 
um, let's go to the IRR and let's say that it's 3.5 so we have less reflectivity and we have more fresh node let's go to have a little bit less anisotropy and in the rendering let's set the area to the sphere and render okay uh, let's change the a little bit the error let's go to 2.7 and we can have a little bit more glossiness and again preview okay you see that now it seems uh, stranger than before and maybe we can just create uh, some different maps just to uh, give it a strange aspect so uh, first of all uh, we can copy this map and put over um, the reflection then we can use a color correction map discard old map you see that it is dark and we can make it brighter we can remove the saturation and we can have a brighter map and we can do the same about the closeness so as a copy and we can go with this map and then we can use the same as bump so paste but obviously we have to change the blurring let's go to 0 0.5 and we can have a little bit higher there let's say maybe one and render I think we can have less bumping so let's go to 0 0.25 maybe still less let's go to 0 0 0.05 and we can have a little bit different level of detail there so let's go to 0 0.5 for the reflection and the same for the glossiness so 0 0.5 and again okay you see it's a strange sphere let's go up okay and this one will be uh, just let's see or maybe we can stay with this uh, this value and something more that can be fine uh, and done is to create maybe some structure over the sphere but it is not important actually I'd like to see what happens if we have a little bit more reflection at the moment maybe again 0 3 5 okay let's stay uh, with this value and let's see just what happens if we have a little bit different value for the anisotropy okay let's go in the glossiness and let's try with this value okay so let's save and we can do a preview for the entire image with the displacement and all the parameters set to the final value so uh, let's go there and let's say that we work at 900 400 and about the renderer let's say that we work with a Mitchell and we are using the new unified sampling mode if you are using the old the old 3ds max we can work with a classic so you can see the parameters and you can go for example at 64 and 4 and we can render so that's our um, sorry uh, actual setup i like to set up the uh, the map over the uh, the sphere so let's go there 
and let's say that this one is a blend material the second material is for the moment a glass physical let's say that it's completely visible the second one we remove the displacement and in the rendering we set a really low value so we go back to the sorry to uh, 1, 4 and 4 and in the rendering we go just to render this part so you see that's uh, one step for um, our, um, our sphere I like to see what happens if we have some changes there sorry there in the uh, glass parameters there and we remove this one obviously it will be completely transparent with the reflectivity just the reflectivity so that's another step we'll use for our uh, our material and at the beginning will be uh, like that but we can have also no presence of the sphere so the uh, uh, the possibility is to have this one then the other one and then the passage to uh, the uh, the metal one so uh, that's the various step and to control the presence of the second material we'll use a noise this map will be really important because we'll use this map also for the uh, the particles so and this map can be let's say a turbulence and let's say that it is more little so you see that's the result we have some glass and some metal let's run our game okay we can manipulate the map and let's say that the map needs to have more details and let's see with a major scale okay and back to the scale we had before and render okay you see that it's controlled by this map and we'll animate this map to control it so let's start to prepare also uh, some basic stuff for the particle and to do this we we'll go inside the particle system particle flow source particle view and we we'll start to prepare something something that can be done is to prepare some particles moving over uh, the so uh, there we can remove the speed we can remove also the rotation so actually uh, let's say that we have the position object so we can use the sphere uh, that's the position object let's add the sphere so you see we have particles all over the sphere there and let's say that we have all the particles at the beginning and let's say maybe 25 particles 
and then we have the speed done by the uh, surface so we'll move the particles all around the sphere and in this case we have to, s to use the speed by surface the surface will be the sphere so you see that actually the particles are moving away and we have to set using um, the control speed so for every single frame it would control the speed and we have to say also that we are using the parallel to surface so you see the particles are moving all around the sphere and something that can be done is to use a lower speed let's say maybe 26 and we have 16 for the variation and you see that the particles are moving over the surface actually I don't like to have uh, too fast so let's go for 300 okay and let's try maybe just a little bit higher for the speed okay you see that the particles are moving all around and something more that can be done is to have a little bit less for the acceleration let's see if it helps okay it is nice and then now we can add something and we can add the spawning so with the spawning we create more particles that's the one spawning but we'll use a different setup we'll use the by travel distance and let's say that actually the uh, normal is okay okay let's use an higher step size to be sure that it will not slow down too much and let's go there let's say that the speed is just maybe 15 with a 3 percent of variation and for the moment we have no um, divergence so let's see what happened in the viewport okay and let's go there and let's say that we have a display and this one is connected to the display and the display will use dots okay and another thing we can do is to uh, use a delete to kill the particles after a while so uh, let's go to peak the delete and let's say that we delete by age let's say 30 and maybe 5 for the variation and that's what we have actually okay back and to create a chaotic movement we can use the random walk and we can put it there and we can set in this way you see that the particles are moving with a chaotic movement over uh, the uh, the sphere we can scale some value so let's say that the particle velocity is 100 percent is 100 centimeters and we'll have 35 percent of variation and the noise size is more little and if we go to see you see that we have more cows okay nice uh we can have maybe just a little bit more viscosity let's say 100 tweet uh 25 with a 25 percent of variation okay and maybe in this case it can be bigger than noise size perfect then we can have a random walk also for the uh, spawned particles yeah. 
and in this case the parameters can be a little bit different so we can have less speed let's say maybe 10 the variation is 25 percent the noise size is little let's say 10 the viscosity is higher and more variation let's see and you see that we have more cows over the particles so back there and we can say to set to known the visibility of those particles and we can go to two centimeters okay and you see that we have more strange particles let's say one okay so we have some kind of energy moving over the sphere during the animation so uh, we have a basic setup for one of the layers we'll use for the cloaking effects uh, we have to animate materials we have to start rendering the various passes and then work on all the other um, passes effects than using the particle system I can save and for the moment that's all and I hope to see you back on Max Cookie to check for new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye!